This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Today is Tuesday, which means we are doing a top five list. And um, before we get into it, I just want to give a massive shout out to my pal in the Netherlands, a certain Mr. Edwin Toonen, who uh, suggested this topic today. He got in touch with me and said, you know that top five Tuesday series of videos? Why don't you do one on ugly headstock shapes? And I thought, what a brilliant idea. So that's what we're going to do today. Um... And uh, before we get into it, I'll just mention that obviously beauty and ugliness is very much in the eye of the beholder. Some of the headstock shapes here I'm going to mention, you possibly, probably even, I don't know, you might like them. Um, you know, if that's the case, please take all of what you're about to hear with a pinch of salt. Uh, if you have any headstock shapes which you find aesthetically displeasing, then why not leave a comment below? But these are the ones that I find aesthetically displeasing, starting with... 70s Stratocaster headstocks. Yes. Um, there we go. You see what's wrong with that picture there? The head's too big. Much like this picture here. Um, you know, I, it's... The, the weird thing is that back in uh, the 1990s, uh, when Fender announced they were going to do a Bonnie Raitt signature Strat, I remember vividly reading in Guitarist magazine, and I think I'm just about getting the quote right here, uh, Guitarist magazine reported on this, and they said, um, controversially, uh, Bonnie has specified the much-loathed 70s headstock shape for her signature model so that was very much the the kind of received wisdom back then you know 30 years ago or thereabouts um well 25 30 years ago um certainly no one i spoke to uh, thought that this headstock shape on a stratocaster looked anything other than just ungainly and ugly um, but then, I don't know, I guess the, the, the wind changed, times changed, tastes changed, some people's did anyway, and uh, that headstock became sort of something of a, uh, went, went, went from, in many people's minds, being something of an ugly duckling to a beautiful swan. i got to tell you, I still don't get it. I still think it, um, it looks oversized, ungainly, and um, just, just wrong, basically. Um, you know, but that is, as I said, just my opinion. Next. The clipped Epiphone headstock. Yes, the, uh, the clipped Epiphone headstock shape. Um, you know, because Epiphone sort of updated the headstock shape in about, um, what was it, 2019, didn't they? And uh, we can see both of those headstock shapes here. The one on the left, uh, where I've circled where the corners are being clipped off, that's the pre-2019 shape. And the one on the right is the more kind of current version of the Epiphone headstock shape, which I really, really like. Um, I think it looks graceful and elegant and just, um, you know, it works. Whereas the one on the left, I don't know, it just looks like there's something missing. For example, if we were to take this picture here and do this, then that is what that headstock shape on the left there looks like to me. Um, you know, it's... It's just not my uh, thing, and it, it just—I don't mind it on a on a semi-acoustic like an Epiphone Dot, as they used to make, or you know the Sheraton or Riviera, or any of those guitars. I don't mind that headstock shape there. It looks in keeping there, but on a on a Les Paul or an SG, it just kind of looks wrong. And um, you know, you may disagree, but these are just my opinions. So there you go. Next, Dean headstocks. We've all worked at some point with that bloke, and it usually is a bloke, that thinks they are the office clown. You know, they laugh a little bit too loudly at their own jokes. They wear loud clothes. They're often prone to playing practical jokes and, you know, thinking that it makes them a little bit anarchic and a little bit edgy and a little bit uh, non-conformist. You know, someone like this, for example... Anyone else remember the fast show? Um, 
Yes, uh, basically if this guy were to design a guitar headstock, it would probably look a lot like that. And that's all I've got to say on the matter. Next. Gibson Modern. Yeah, the Gibson Modern, often um, kind of, uh, I think, unfairly uh, referred to as Gibson's ugly duckling of a guitar. In this picture here, I actually think it looks really rather nice. You know, it's it's got something of a shark fin kind of vibe going on. Um, you can see the sort of, uh, you know, the kind of family uh, resemblance between this and a flying V. Uh, this would actually be a variant on a flying V that would be comfortable to sit playing down. And you know how some aeroplanes or cars, like um, like thinking of aeroplanes like maybe a Concorde or a Spitfire, can look like they're doing a thousand miles an hour when they're stood still. There's an element of that about this in this guitar. And then what did they do? They put this headstock shape on it. There is a certain level of what on earth were they thinking about uh, that just kind of baffles me here. It reminds me of this here. Uh, this sign, employees must wash their hands before returning to work. And this company, wherever this was, obviously had some blind employees because they put the sign up in Braille as well, behind a glass screen. Indeed, you know, it is... As I say, that level of what on earth were they thinking that um, must have been around when, when they designed that modern headstock. It is possibly the ugliest guitar headstock ever made. And it ruins what I... And I think it's because of that headstock shape, actually, that um, that guitar is referred to as an ugly duckling. Because without it, I think it's rather nice looking, graceful, tasteful, you know. Um, but with it, it just ruins it. Next. Vintage V100. Yeah, now before we get into this, I like vintage guitars. Um, I've owned several of them, and um, the vintage V100 is a really, really good wallet-friendly, budget-friendly uh, Les Paul copy. Um, you know, so much so that you're getting, I mean, I can't remember what he was called, but uh, the guitar player in one of the current incarnations of Saxon. Um, is is using one and um, you know playing big stages with it. They are good guitars, but the headstock I think really rather lets it down. Let's have a look at it here. Now there is the vintage V100 headstock shape, and you know it's I can see what they've done. Right? Okay. They've, there's a Gibson headstock uh, next to it, and uh, they thought right. We can't copy the Gibson open book headstock shape. What characterises that? Well, there's that sort of little kind of indent in the middle. Well, why don't we do the opposite? Why don't we put a, a little peak in the middle? And Oh, no, that looks a bit, mm, not sure about that. Let's put one either side of it. And the end result is that you end up with this kind of ungainly, lumpy, bumpy kind of... Um, well, nothing really. It, it it just doesn't look like it's been thought through. I, I I don't know. It just looks aesthetically unpleasing. Now, there is a company that have done a rather clever thing. There's the Schechter headstock shape and the Gibson headstock shape. They just actually took a negative of the Gibson headstock shape and um, you know and made it work. And I think that is a much cleverer and better design um rather than let's go back to it this one here it's just i don't know it, that's as i say lumpy and bumpy and not quite sure of what it's trying to do is the um is my impression of that so there you go the vintage v100 as i said earlier let me know if you have any uh guitar headstock shapes that you find a little bit um, lumpy and bumpy, ungainly, uh, out of proportion, just off kilter in some way, something that, you know, you don't really kind of care for with a headstock shape. Um, it is the face of the guitar in many ways. Um, it's the, you know, the brand identity of it. It's the, the thing that you can um, sort of, that you associate with, with, with the guitar. And um, those are the ones that... Uh, Really don't tick the boxes for me. The uh, the 70s Strat headstock, the clipped Epiphone, Dean headstocks, 
the Gibson Modern and the Vintage V100. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. But that is pretty much the video for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and found it entertaining and useful in some small way. And if that's the case, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so. And why not drop me a like as well while you're at it. Don't forget the live stream every Friday, 5pm UK time. We drink beer and talk about music and guitars and all manner of other things. Great way to kick off the weekend. I'd love to see you there if you can make it. But for now, I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Look after yourselves, folks. Stay well, stay safe, and above all, stay sane. Bye for now. Thank you.